May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some time ago, my daughter, who is a bit of an adventurous thrill seeker, and I watched Free Solo, a movie about a climber who reached the peak of El Capitan, notoriously the most difficult cliff face to climb with no ropes and no equipment, just with his bare hands and feet and nothing more. At some point of the climb, his only hold on the rock was just big enough for his finger and thumb to grip with an eighth of an inch between. My daughter marveled at his accomplishment, but my reaction throughout had been, why on earth do you do that? He could die and he's risking his life just to climb up a rock. I admit that it was partly maternal instinct to not encourage her to try her own hand at free solo climbing, but also partly my fear for extreme sports that took over my impression of Alex Honnold, the man who free soloed El Capitan. My daughter then insisted that I hadn't understood the challenge. It wasn't about thrill-seeking or risk, it wasn't just some adrenaline fuel stunt. It was about having, fa having faith. Alex had practiced going up the face of the rock over and over again, a number of years, planning meticulously his route up the cliff face, researching and memorizing every inch so that there would be no risk in ascending El Capitan. You do know exactly what moves to execute and know exactly what was coming up next. This wasn't about achieving something that was ridiculously dangerous. This was about being so prepared for a great challenge that he was able to do something seemingly impossible with the greatest confidence and faith. In today's gospel reading, we also hear about a challenge faced by Peter of something that was seemingly impossible for him to overcome by himself. As he saw Jesus walking on the water, he joined Jesus to walk on it. But as soon as he saw the strong wind blowing toward him, he lost his confidence and in fear, he drowned. As we know, Peter was usually very bold and full of vigor and had a boisterous temper. He was a man who wanted to have mighty faith but faltered often. He was always putting his foot in his mouth and was often wrong about things. Even though he followed Jesus, spent time with him for three years and became one of Jesus' most beloved disciples, he continually made mistakes time and again. He even rebuked Jesus after he foretold his death, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. And after Jesus was arrested, before the rooster crowed the next morning, Peter disowned Jesus three times. But we also see him slowly growing in confidence and faith throughout his Christian journey as an eyewitness to many miracles that Jesus performed, the transfiguration along with John and James, and of course, to Jesus' resurrection and ascension. And finally, when he received the Holy Spirit and witnessed the work of God, this unschooled man spoke with boldness to crowds of thousands, proclaiming the good news and converting people to the faith. In the gained confidence and faith that he had in God, he performed many miracles, including bringing the dead back to life. He traveled all over, sharing Jesus' message, enduring persecution, imprisonment, and ultimately death 
in faith and love of God, showing his maturity by living a spirited life. For in his first epistle, chapter 2, verses 2 to 3, Peter himself says, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. And as I reflect on this, now I see through the story that in Christian faith, it is not just enough to know the presence of Jesus among us, but to have confidence in that faith and follow his way throughout our lives. Just as with the building of confidence and faith, Alex was able to achieve the seemingly unachievable and that Peter had faith and confidence in Jesus till his death. I think today's gospel reading challenges us too. It challenges us to question our own confidence in our faith because the work of God on earth doesn't end at the coming of Jesus to the world in human form. But it is in our obedience that is sustained with confidence and faith in the Emmanuel God who is there for us always. God so loved the world that he sent his only son so that we may believe in him and have, have eternal life. Knowing this truth is but just the beginning of our journey in faith. And our journey in faith is a challenge of growing our confidence in the love of God, his guidance, and his salvation. And I wonder how prepared we are to face it. Amen. Together, let us stand to confess.